Hey everyone, Kirk here with Tactical Options Trading. Thank you so much for joining me here on this video today. So today I wanted to make a quick video for you on how to set up a watch list in your Thinkorswim platform. So if you're new to trading or you're new to the Thinkorswim platform, this video could be very helpful for you. But if you've been using the Thinkorswim platform for a while, you might find some useful tips in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. So when you open up your Thinkorswim platform, over here on the left-hand side, you're gonna see a, a little column that you can open up with this arrow. So when you click on this arrow, it's gonna open up this gadget column here. We can add different gadgets into this column. Now this column is an adjustable column as, you, as you've as you probably already discovered, but when we wanna add a watch list into this column, we come down here and we click this plus sign. What that does is it opens up a drop-down menu of different gadgets that we can add so we want to add a watch list into our column today so we click that watch list and what happens is that thinkorswim already uh, populates a watch list in here for you and they've labeled it indices and they've already have a bunch of indexes in here for you uh, in this watch list already but let's say you wanted to add your own watch list with all your own ticker symbols that you could use anytime you wanted so let's come in here and we click this drop down menu we hit create watch list now you can create this list and, and call it whatever you want. Let's just call this uh, My Stocks. So when we click My Stocks, that, that adds that uh, title in there. And then we can come down here and we could add those stocks in. Uh, let's say we wanted to add Tesla, uh, maybe MGM Grand, uh, Las Vegas Sands, maybe Costco, uh, maybe Apple, uh, maybe Nvidia. Uh, we can just go ahead and add those stocks in there and it's making that watch list for us now we don't have to know all the stocks that we want to add in this watch list at this point we can also add those later so when i click save what it's going to do is it's going to put it right up here in our new watch list so when i click save now you can see there's our there's our stocks and there's the stocks that we've added one cool feature with the uh, with the platform here is that we can drag and drop these columns anywhere we want so let's say we wanted to move the last over here uh, maybe we wanted to move the net change over here and we wanted that bid and ask a little closer to the ticker symbol uh, but let's say we wanted to add some custom columns into our watch list and we do that by clicking this gear icon right here and we click customize and what that allows us to do is now uh, add a whole bunch more columns into our watch list that uh, that we might find useful. So maybe maybe we did not want that uh, net change. Maybe we wanted percent change. So we could click that percent change, and the way we would add it into this watch list, we can do it one of two ways. One, we can just drag it and drop it in there, or we can remove that by double clicking it, or add it by double clicking it. Which I, found, which I find to be a lot easier. Uh, now let's say we wanted to order it in here instead of dragging it and dropping it here. We can just do that by, by moving it, dragging it and dropping it in here. Uh, let's say for example, we wanted to also add that 52 week high and low. We, weren't, uh, we wanted to kind of keep an eye on that 52 week high and low. So we could come down in here and find that 52 week high and low, there it is. 52 week high, 52 week low, and we could go ahead and add those in. Now when I click OK, now it's going to change those columns up here, but it won't do that until I click OK. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. And when I click OK, now you can see that it's added those in. Now you can see we've got quite a few columns up in here, and they're maybe getting up a little bunched up and might not be able to see those numbers too well. We can open that up and, and uh, space those columns out a little bit better so that we can see what we're actually looking at. Uh, but let's say we wanted to again drag that 52 week high and low over uh, a little closer to uh, the ticker symbol. So you can see that we can, we can, uh, it's very customizable in here. We can add what columns we want, we can move them around. Um, I want to show you something with a, a watch list that I already have set up and I call it my favorites. So you can see I've, on this watch list, I have quite a few symbols that I like to look at. Um, one thing that's really cool is we can sort these columns by just clicking on the headers. So let's say for today we wanted to see who was the gainers and who was the losers for the day. We could come over here and click this percent change. And when we click that percent change on my favorites watch list, you can see 
that it sorted that column out by the losers and the winners for the day and it puts the highest uh, the highest percent gained gain on uh, the lowest one here. Now let's say we just wanted to sort it the other way. We could do that by just re-clicking it and now it puts it up here at the top and all the losers down here at the bottom. Uh, let's say we wanted to find a symbol, uh, but we, we had a hard time going through all of these symbols to try to find Apple. Uh, you can see it right there, but we wanted to bring it up closer to the top or we wanted to bring it in alphabetical order. We could just click that symbol icon there and sort it alphabetically and it would bring that up to the top. I'm closing it up there. You bring it up there to the top and we, now you can see we have all of our A's and B's, C's, D's, E's, and it sorts it alphabetically. So lots of cool things that you could do here setting up your watch list. Now, for example, uh, when you set up your watch list, it's not going to be linked to your charts here. So we don't want to necessarily be typing in first solar uh, every time we wanted to look at first solar or come in here and type in IBM just looking over here. You know, when we click on it, it's not populating our chart. If we wanted to type in IBM, that can get cumbersome. So we want to link these charts up so that when we click on our watch list, it automatically populates it in here to our chart. So the way we do that is uh, you can see this little chain link here and we want to link that up. So you click on that and I've got my chart set on red. So over here, you can set your chart up on different links. So I've got my chart over here set up on red. So I want to set this watch list up on red. So now those two are linked together. They both have red in there. And now when I click on IBM or IWM, let's say, because we already have IBM in, in here, if we click IWM, it's going to populate that into my chart window. So that makes it really helpful to come down and see, you know, by clicking these symbols um, that we can just automatically populate those in into our window there. Uh, so I really like that. Uh, another cool feature in Thinkorswim is we can set up scans. And when we set up a scan, we can add those scans to our watch list and we can scan certain stocks based on a scan that we've set up and, and have it populate in our watch list. So for example, I'm going to set up another video or, or show another video, make another video in the future about how to set up a scan or how to make a scan. But for this video, I want to show you how to use the watch list in finding those scans. So I've already set up a scan, uh, for example, on RSI, so RSI above 70. And that, that's uh, one thing that I like to do is look for RSI above 70 or RSI below 30 and gives me ideas of stocks that I can trade for the day. So real quick, let's just add an RSI um, indicator to our chart here. So let's come into the indicators and type RSI. There's that RSI and we'll just go ahead and add that by double clicking and hit apply and OK and you can see that it's added that RSI to our screen here. Now when I click these because we're RSI above 70 based on that scan that I've set up in my scanner, when I click these symbols these will be stocks that have an RSI over 70. So let's test that out. So let's go with CVS and you can see there was CVS. Yes it was above 70. Uh, EGN, yep, that's just coming up above 70. IGN, yep, that's above 70. Uh, Lowe's, uh, that's just up above 70. So you can add these scans into your into your watch list. And you can see I have quite a few set up. So anything with these purple uh, bullseyes next to them are scans that I have previously set up that I can use and, and scan those stocks daily. So let me just really quickly show you, kind of give you a glimpse of how we do that. So if you come into the scan tab right up here at the top and you come in and you can, you can type in, a, you know, you can set up yourself up a scan here and then you can save that scan. But let's just say we've already saved that scan and uh, we want to load a scan query of RSI above 70. And the only reason I'm doing this is because let's say, we'd already set we were in here right now setting up this scan and so these are the parameters that we'd set up and so once we have all of our parameters set up we would come back over here and hit save scan query 
And in this case, I've already saved that scan query as RSI above 70. So when that when it uh, it did the scan, it pulled up all these stocks of RSI above 70. And now let's say I wanted to make that into a watch list. Uh, what I could do is come up here and click this menu and uh, hit save scan query, which I've already done, and then come down here and click save as a watch list. Now when I click save as a watch list, what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me the chance to name that scan whatever I wanted. So in this case, I've already named it in my uh, scan is RSI above 70. So this is where you would do that though. You'd type in RSI above 70 and click save so that when you come in here now and look in your scans and you come into your personal watch list that you've set up and you come in here to your to your scans and you look for RSI above 70 and you click that, it's going to pull up that scan for the day. So here we are. Here's our scan for the day and it's the same ones that are here. So uh, one last thing I wanted to show you is, you know, maybe this watch list when we start adding all these columns starts to maybe get a little jumbled. We can open that up. But let's say, you know, we wanted to just completely detach this watch list and put it off to the side and then use all this screen real estate for our chart. Well, we can do that by just coming in here and clicking this drop down menu and clicking detach gadget. Now what that does is it just detaches our watch list that we can actually move that off to another screen. Uh, and then once we've moved that off to another screen, we can just come in here and just fold, just collapse our, our watch list up, which now gives us all this room for our chart, which I find very helpful. Uh, let's say for example, though, you wanted to bring your watch list back in and maybe you wanted just to shrink it down and have it on the same screen, you could do that by just shrinking down that watch list, but you didn't want it to disappear behind your chart. What you can do is just click this little tack right here and that will keep it always on top so that when you, when you click your symbols now, everything will just, it will just stay on top. So no matter where you click on this screen, it's gonna keep this on top. So lots of nice features with the watch list in Thinkorswim. I hope you found this video helpful and uh, if you liked it please give me a like subscribe and if this is your first time here and you're interested in learning more about thinkorswim or trading or trading options in general click that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you do not miss out on any future videos thanks so much for watching we'll catch you next time